Okay, everybody, welcome back. So in this section, we're going to create our next track. We're going to start recording our electric guitar. Uh, in our session here, we have our drum track from the last session. Now we're going to work on electric guitar. We're going to record a little part to this drum track. So now before we get to that, you want to make sure that you have your quarter inch cable obviously plugged in to let's say input one on your audio interface. And for now, keep the level on the audio box USB turned all the way down for now. We're going to set the levels in a second. And also make sure that the 48 volt phantom power switch is not lit, that it's in the out position. We don't want to introduce 48 volts to our electric guitar signal, okay? So you got your electric guitar plugged in, you have your level one turned all the way down, and you have your 48 volts uh, out in the outward position. You got your headphones plugged into your headphone jack on the back. We're going to be using those in a second. And you want to make sure your headphone level is uh, at an appropriate level for you, that it's not too loud, not too quiet, obviously. You want to be able to hear that. And you also want to make sure that the, uh, the, the encoder, that's the mix playback, just for now, put that at 12 o'clock. We'll talk about what that kind of does a little bit later. So now let's head on into Studio One and let me show you how to set up a guitar track. And we're going to use the internal um, guitar amp uh, simulator plugin, the VST that comes with Studio One Artist called Ampire. We're going to set that up now and then we're going to record a little guitar track. So let's head on over to Studio One here. I'll put this guitar down and in Studio One here is our drum track from before, right? So now to add a track, all we're going to do is we're just going to go in and we're going to um, do this a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, we can go up to the top here where it says track and we can just hit track and hit add tracks. So now what we want to do is this is the add tracks dialog box. Uh, we want to add one mono track for our guitar here. So you can see here we can name it. I'm going to name it electric guitar. It's an audio track. We only want to add one of them, just one track now. Uh, the color can be any color we want. We can change the color here in a second. Uh, we want it to be mono, not stereo. Okay, we don't want to use any presets, any presets. And because we're plugged into channel one on our audio interface that I showed you how to set up the I.O. in an earlier section, we want to make sure we're on input one and our output is the main. So we're just going to click OK. And as you'll see, there's a track that comes up here and we can just uh, click and drag this down here. Now we can change the color once again just by clicking on the sidebar. And let's change this to the color green so we can make it a little different looking than the drum track that is up above. So now that we have our electric guitar track, we need to add our VST instrument ampire. That's going to be our guitar amp uh, simulator plug-in to give us kind of a guitar amp sound so you don't have to mic up a guitar amp. It all comes with Studio One Artist. So the way to do that, let's uh, first expand our mixer by just clicking on the mix button here. And whoops, let's click on the mix button and here's our Oops, I keep hitting the wrong button, sorry. Uh, and this is our electric guitar track. Now we're gonna add, we're gonna open up the, uh, the track here. We're gonna just expand it. See this little hash mark here? We're just gonna expand it. And now we're gonna put our inserts here. So to find Ampire, the guitar amp plugin, we're gonna go over to the browser. We're gonna hit the browse button. And we're gonna go into the effects tab, which we're already here, okay? And we're going to click on the PreSonus uh, folder and we're going to grab the first plugin called Ampire. So you can just left click on this, highlight it, and drag it in. Okay, and then I'm going to close the browser. So this is the Guitar Amp Simulator plugin Ampire. Um, and there's a ton of presets, and um, we're not going to spend a lot of time messing through all the different features of this. I urge you to play with it. It's pretty self explanatory. The best way to start is to maybe come up here and pick one of your presets. Um, but they have everything from, you know, American style amplifier sounds to British style amplifier sounds, clean, crunchy, so on and so forth. Um, and you're going to be able to play with that here. So we have, if we just stick it on its default, we have an A, an A uh, channel, and a B channel here. And you have a, you know, each knob. You have a drive knob, a bass knob, a mid, treble, presence, and a gain knob. Over here, you can choose the cabinet that you want. There's all different cabinets here. We're going to keep it on 412 British for now. And then if you click on this little stomps. Uh, button here. This is going to pull up some stomp boxes that come along with the plugin. So they have an auto wah, they have a tube driver here, which is kind of cool, an equalizer, uh, some modulation stuff, some reverb stuff. And once you get the sound that you're kind of looking for for your song, in this song we're going to use kind of a little bit of a uh, a heavily driven overdrive sound, kind of a rock blues kind of a tone. You can save things as presets. So you can mess around with this, play with the sound, get it just the way you want. And then once you get that, you can save it as your own preset, which I've already done off camera in the, uh, in the spirit of saving time in this video. Um, by the way you do that is you just, once you say, for example, you like this setup and you want to save this as a preset. 
come up to this little icon here next to the power switch and you just right here and you can just say store preset you can name the preset you can describe it you can put it in a subfolder and you can just save that preset so the next time you go to use it it's already there for you okay now i've already done that if i come down here um, i went to, i created a day a preset called david's preset Okay, where I spend some time, and you'll see that it's up here, and I spent some time kind of messing around with this a little bit to get a halfway uh, decent uh, guitar tone here, or for what I feel is a halfway decent guitar tone. And we're going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to close this out now. So Empire is here uh, on the track. Now the next thing we need to do, in order for us to be able to hear this through our headphones when we're playing the guitar, we're going to need to turn on this little speaker button here. Here's the monitor button here, okay? That's going to allow us to hear the guitar. So if I kind of put my headphones on, here and I urge you to do the same and if I grab my guitar here and I grab myself a plectrum and we go ahead and we just hit a chord here okay so we have an electric guitar tone with a little bit of breakup okay so now once we got the guitar tone that we like it's time for us now to set up our guitar level going into Studio One. Now this is super important, so let me take off my cans here for a second and talk to you. So when you're setting levels for any instrument, guitar, vocal mics, it doesn't matter, I'll say this over and over again from this point forward to remind you, you want to set your incoming level with the encoder on the front, in this case encoder number one. You want to turn that, it starts all the way off, you want to start turning it clockwise until when you're playing the guitar and hitting at maybe the loudest point, hitting some pretty solid, uh, if you're going to be strumming pretty hard, you want to hit it pretty hard. And you want to see the incoming level on the inputs raised to about around a negative 12 dB on your input level. That's conservative enough where you can play, you know, play your heart out, really dig into the guitar and you're not going to have any danger of clipping when you're recording. So somewhere between the negative 12, negative 10 dB on our input meter is kind of where we want to be. Now it doesn't have to be exactly negative 12, it could be negative 13, negative 15, negative 9, but somewhere in that ballpark on all instruments. That's going to give us a nice conservative level of recording so we can later on at EQ and compression and whatever else we want to do and we don't have to worry about any kind of digital clipping, okay? So when you um, first add this track here, like we did before, if you look over here on the sidebar of Studio One, you'll see the Inputs tab. If I click this and open it, and I hit my guitar, you'll see the incoming levels coming through. See that? And if I uh, put my headphones back on, and I kind of play pretty hard and, and turn up my uh, encoder here, I, again, I want to be around a negative 12, so let's do that. I got my headphones on and let's go ahead and just and you can see on the top of the input meter we're around a negative 15 which is pretty conservative now if I turn down that if I turn down that input level just so you can see on the on the scale here so all the way down is at like a negative 24 dB. That's too, uh, too conservative, too quiet. We want to turn it up a little. So again, it's somewhere around 11 o'clock with this guitar, this pickup configuration. Okay, so around negative 12, negative 13, we're just fine. I would rather be a little conservative then a little bit uh, too hot and then have digital clipping and ruin our performance. So once you have your input level set, you've plugged your guitar in, you have the guitar sound that you kind of like, you could go ahead and you can just close this guitar track so we can kind of save some space on our screen here. And we want to make sure that our, our monitor button is lit up on the track because if you don't, if you, if you disengage that, you won't you won't hear anything in your headphones. So you want to be able to hear your performance. So you have to turn the monitor switch on. And there we go. Okay, and you can see the incoming signal up on that track. Okay, now we want to hit our record enable button here. And this will put the track in record mode ready to go. So when we hit play and our drum track starts playing back, we could go ahead and we could record our guitar part. So let's try that right now. We'll give, see if we could do this in, a, in one take. Okay, so we just now we got our track enabled. We have our monitor button on, and we're going to hit the record button here. We're going to make sure our, our playhead is all the way back to the beginning of the song, and the way to do that on the keyboard is just hit the comma key, 
Okay, that's a shortcut to bring it all the way back. Just hit the comma key. And then we're just gonna go ahead and hit record and we're gonna record this track. Let's see how it goes. Okay, there's the end of our song. So let's hit the space bar to stop. And now you can see that we've recorded this track here. Now, if we want to listen back to that, let's turn down the volume on our guitar. We want to make sure we turn off the record enable button, turn off the speaker button, and now we should be able to play back from the top and we should be able to hear that guitar track. And we can, we can mix the guitar track, turn up the volume up and down to kind of mix it so we like the balance between that and the drums. And that's how you record a electric guitar track. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're not going to win any Grammys for that, for that wonderful song I wrote there. But now you get an idea of how you can easily just add a track and you can just record an electric guitar using Ampire, the, uh, the VST that comes along with Studio One Art. It's a great plugin. Uh, I urge you to mess around with it. Save your own presets. Find the kind of tones that you like. And go ahead and record yourself some electric guitar. And in the next section, we're going to come back and we're going to record a bass guitar to this song and add a little bit of bottom end. So come on back for the next section.